So you're thinking about moving to Edmonton, but you're a super visual learner. All these lists and top fives and bottom fives, pros and cons, these don't do anything for you. You want to get a real sense of what it would be like to live in the city, in the different areas, the different communities, what the amenities would look like. And you're a visual learner like I am. So today you are in luck because we're going to be jumping into Google Maps and doing a Google Maps virtual tour of the city of Edmonton. We're going to be splitting in the city into four different sections so that you can get a sense for what the communities look like, what different amenities everything has, the proximity to the airport, the proximity to get out to the mountains. These are things that we're going to be taking a look at today in our virtual tour of Edmonton. So make sure you stick around for that. Guys, my name is Brian. I'm a real estate agent here in the city of Edmonton, and I get calls and texts from people every single day who are looking to move to Edmonton from the more expensive metros of Canada, the US, and abroad. So if that sounds like you, I want you to reach out to me. All my information is in the description, so you can reach out to me in whatever method you feel most comfortable. Now, if you are looking to always be on top of the market here in Edmonton, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you are always the first to know when we post more content about living in Edmonton, and you are always the first to know about the current market conditions here in Edmonton. And guys, without any further ado, let's jump right into Google Maps and get on with this virtual tour. All right, guys, so here we are. We've jumped into Google Maps. We're taking a look at a bird's eye view of Edmonton here. Now, before we jump into the city and divide it into different sections so that you can get a good sense of where you would want to live here in Edmonton, what would fit your needs, we're going to be taking a look at some of the general information of Edmonton. Now, one of the first things you're going to notice here is the ring road going around the outside of the city here. Now, those aren't the city limits. We do have a lot of newer development that's going on outside of the Anthony Hende Road, which is our ring road here. But it's a great way to get around the city, get to a different section of the city quickly. If you need to get somewhere else within the city, the Anthony Hende is a great option to do so. Now it can get a little congested first thing in the morning when people are heading to work or when people are coming home from work, but otherwise it is a great way to get around the city. Now we're gonna look at some of the major roads here. Obviously you can see that there are two major roads that go east to west in the city. That's gonna be the White Mud Drive on the south side here and the Yellowhead Trail on the north side. You're also gonna notice Highway 2, which is Calgary Trail coming down south out of Edmonton. That's gonna head all the way to Calgary, if I can zoom out here. So you're gonna see you're gonna be able to access Calgary through Red Deer here. If you're looking to get out to Banff, get out to the mountains, then that's gonna be a great way to do it. If you wanna get out to BC or head east, you're gonna be able to come access the Highway 1, which cuts across Canada here. So you're gonna take the two to come down south and access Southern Alberta, Calgary, or even head down to the States there. Now, just to the west of Nisku, this is going to be the Edmonton Airport. So again, you have to access Highway 2 to get down here. And really, if you're on part of the south side of the city here, that's going to be a pretty easy drive to make. And it's not going to take you too long to get down to the airport. So that's something to consider when you're looking for where you want to live here in Edmonton. Now, you notice there are also a few roads coming out of the north side of Edmonton here. You have Manning Drive, Mark Messier Trail, which turns into St. Albert Trail outside of the city here, and 97th Street. So there's going to be lots of options to get out of the city here as well. Now, today we're going to be cutting the city into four different sections that we're going to be taking a little bit more of a detailed look into. The first of those is going to be the south side, which is going to follow the river valley here. Come loop around the bottom of the city. We're going to cut back into the city like so. We're going to be taking a look at the west side, which again follows the river valley up here. Kind of cuts off at 142nd and then 111 Ave and then loops around the west side of the city over there. We're going to be taking a look at the downtown core, which is kind of just along the river valley here in the center of Edmonton. And then we're going to be taking a look at the north side, which is everything up here. Now, you're going to notice that I haven't highlighted the east side of the city. That's this is largely industrial space. There's going to be a lot of trade workshops. This is going to be a lot of uh, just industrial space in general. We're going to have an oil refinery out here. So we're not going to be talking about this because there really isn't any residential space out here, but it is definitely something to consider, especially if you're going to be living along the edge of this area here. Now, let me erase these lines. We'll jump right into it 
and we're going to start on the south side of the city. Now, again, with the south side, we're actually going to cut this even more into about three different parts. That's going to be the southwest side, which is over here. You can see just west of Calgary Trail. We're going to be looking at the southeast side, which is everything over here. And then we're going to be looking at what I call the university area up here in the center. Now, maybe a lot of this wouldn't be technically considered university area here in the city, especially as you get out to the east, because the university is this corner right along the river right here. But I do think that we see enough of the influence of the university in these neighborhoods that we can kind of classify this as the greater university area as a whole. Now let's jump into the southwest side of the city. This is a very desirable part of the city. This is going to be a lot of single family residential. It's not going to be the cheapest part of the city. It is one of the more expensive areas in the city, especially as you head down into Windermere in the southwest corner over here. There's going to be a lot of single family homes with large lots. This is going to be very easy access to the White Mud Creek Ravine that comes along here, splits off into the Black Mud Creek Ravine as well, very original names, which is going to give you great access to a lot of walking trails and just a great opportunity to be engulfed in nature here. You can see also along the west side of this southwest section that you're going to have great scenic views of the river valley and lots of walking trails in through here as well. Now on the southwest side of the city, there's also a lot of shopping amenities. You're gonna have the Currents at Windermere, which is a great shopping area over here with movie theater, lots of restaurants, great place to be. And we also have South Edmonton Common, which is kind of creeping into the southeast side. So let's talk about that as well. As we come into the southeast side of the city, we're gonna have really Mill Woods, which is everything east of 91st here, all the way to 34th. Now, Millwoods is a great space with lots of single family homes that have large lots, mature trees, all these developed neighborhoods. Now, what we're seeing because of that is that there's a lot of young couples, young families moving into Millwoods. Let's kind of section it off here. If they don't want to be in more of the, uh, the newer development communities, they don't want to have the cookie cutter homes. Sometimes the lots are a little bit smaller in these newer developed communities. If they want to get away and have a community that's a little more established, a little more developed, they have large lots, mature trees, and just in general, bigger homes and bigger footprint of the lots, then this is going to be a place that they're coming to find that, especially if they're willing to put a little more sweat equity into the home, if they're willing to do some repairs, if because the homes in here are a little bit older than you're going to see kind of on the south side of the Henday, there's lots of new development along here. Now, the other two sections that we're looking at, obviously, in the southwest side of Edmonton is going to be Tamarack, Silverberry, and Larkspur over here. There's a lot of new development, newer homes in here, as well as the best movie theater in the city with just the nicest reclining leather seats you've ever seen. This is going to be the landmark Tamarack. There's a nice shopping center up here. And then down here, we have Summerside, Walker, we have Ellerslie. And again, this is kind of the middle-aged communities in that 10 to 20 years old, where you're going to find lots of single-family homes and duplexes as well. And the cool thing about the community Summerside down here is you're going to have a nice little lake and beach area that's exclusive to the residents of Summerside. So that's a neat little area to be in as well. Now, as we head over to the university area, if we head up here. So one thing to note about the university area is we're seeing kind of a transition in the real estate that we're seeing in the university area, as we're seeing that we used to have a lot of older and smaller bungalows here in a lot of these communities near the university. And we're seeing a lot of infill development. Now what infill development means is this is when developers buy these properties, tear them down, and in their place, they'll build a large duplex. Uh, th these homes will all be two levels. So you're expanding the, the square footage of the home. Sometimes they can even subdivide the lot into two if it's big enough and build two skinnier but two level homes. So you can still keep a lot of the same square footage or even expand on it, but have newer features, newer, uh, just a newer home in general. Or sometimes they buy these homes and tear them down and build just one large single family home and that can get up into the the million dollar range or above so we're seeing a transition in the real estate 
where this area is getting more expensive uh, just because of the desirability of being in the nature here, being close to the river, being close to the university as well. So if we scroll in here, you're going to see this is the University of Alberta over here. We have the University Hospital that's going to be this area in pink, and then this will be the university campus up here. Again, lots of access to the river valley. There's going to be lots of walking trails and some of the most scenic views in the city along here. Now, one of the other features, we're going to have the Mutart Conservatory. This is a botanical gardens. They're kind of shaped like little glass pyramids, a very scenic area in Edmonton as well. That's quite iconic in the city. One of the other features that we're going to have down here is the Seville Community Sports Center and Foot Fields. This is a great athletic area for those who might enjoy to get away and do that. And the other section that we're going to talk about here in the university area is going to be White Ave, which is a very iconic street in Edmonton with lots of shopping, lots of restaurant options, and a ton of small businesses as well. This is a great place for university students to come hang out or just for anybody to come out and enjoy this area with friends, take in some of the restaurants, the dining, and the small businesses as well that's along here. Now, as we see, I was talking about the infill development. We're going to see that a lot in Strathcona, Garno, McKern, and Belgravia, and a lot of these neighborhoods that are just close to the university up here. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about on the south side here is Horlack Park. So this is a large green space with a little lake, as you can see, just along the river on the south side of Edmonton. This is going to have a lot of events all through the summer, all through the winter, and it's a great place to come out and enjoy a great day. Now, we'll zoom out here. We'll head over to the west side of the city. Now, again, this is going to be, let me draw this out one more time, up along the river valley, and it's going to kind of come across 142nd and then 111th Ave, and then loop around the west side of the city there. Now, as we can see, we kind of have the far west side outside of the Anthony Henday. This is going to be the Hamptons, Granville. We're going to have a Costco just over here. The River Cree Resort and Casino is a great place for events. They're going to host lots of small concerts. They're going to have lots of comedians come through, lots of events that come through the River Cree Resort and Casino. So again, as we come down here into this, the Hamptons area, that's going to be a lot of that mid-range homes where we're going to be from, you know, the early 2000s and on. This is one of my favorite communities in the city because there are a lot of walking trails, a lot of nature, lots of green space and parks, some bodies of water along here as well. Now, as we head north of the White Mud Drive, we're going to have some newer areas up north of that and west of the Anthony Henday. And that's going to come all the way up to this lake here. We're going to have lots of new development, newer communities with lots of great features as well. Now, as we look kind of to this part of the west side of Edmonton, we're going to have West Edmonton Mall right here in yellow, which is the largest mall in North America. We've got a movie theater in there, an indoor amusement park, indoor water park, mini golf. We've got bowling in there, as well as hundreds of shops and restaurants. So that's always a great way to spend a day with family and friends. We also have the Misericordia Community Hospital just over here. Now, in this area of the west side of Edmonton, you're going to see a lot of the same housing that I was talking about in Mill Woods, where we have larger single family homes, mostly bungalows. And those are going to be on larger lots out here. So if that's something that you don't need to have the newest home, you're fine putting in a little bit of work into it yourself, but you'd like to have a larger lot, mature trees in an established community, you're going to get a lot of that on the west side of Edmonton here as well. And then as I was talking about with the university area, we are going to have some infill development, especially as we get closer to the river here. We're seeing a lot of new development to come into these established neighborhoods. So that is something to look for if that's your thing as well. Now, as we come along to the downtown core here, it's not going to be a very large area. I'd say kind of coming over from Glenora and then 107th Ave and South, this area would be your downtown core. Now, obviously, as you see along here, a lot of it is along the river valley. This is going to be a lot of scenic views as you come along here. Now, Glenora is one of the nicest areas in Edmonton. This is going to have a lot of new development in here as well and very expensive multi-million dollar homes. As you come east here, you're going to see, so this is going to be the brewery district, great shopping options and amenities over here. And it ties into McEwen University, which is another university here in the city that is a well-respected university. Lots of students come here. 
you can see the ice district over here. Now, what this is, the city has decided a few years ago that they wanted to revamp the downtown core. So we had a new hockey arena built a few years ago. They've got a couple of large towers that were just built as well. They're putting in a movie theater and just a lot of new amenities so that they can revamp this downtown core. Now you're going to have golfing, lots of walking trails along the North Saskatchewan River. And this can be a great way to get out and enjoy a nice summer or spring or fall day. So that's always something to look for. Now, as we head into the final section of our tour here, this is going to be the north side of Edmonton. Now, the north side can get a little bit of a negative stigma sometimes from residents of Edmonton because it does have a little bit of a mixed bag. As we look on the north side, sometimes we have some of the least expensive housing in the city, and with that can come higher crime rates and less friendly amenities. So you really need to know what you're looking for here on the north side. As we kind of come along the train tracks here, we have a, a railway system cutting through along the Yellowhead Highway. You're going to have some very inexpensive housing here, but along with that, sometimes the crime rates do get a little higher. You're going to see that down in Alberta Avenue as well, up here over by Clareview. But you can see that there are a lot of features and amenities up here on the north side. And we have a lot of newer development and a lot of nicer homes up here and nicer communities as well. So we're going to see, you can see that there's a lot of shopping options in yellow, tons of amenities up here on the north side. As you come into it, you see the lake district here. There's lots of bodies of water, lots of homes backing these lakes. This is going to be one of the nicer areas up here on the north side. But you're going to see that there are a lot of safe and nice communities up here on the north side as well. You just need to know where to look for them. Now, one thing to note about the north side, and I should have talked about this when we were down at the south side as well, but we're going to see that the LRT system here in Edmonton is going to come from Clareview campus. That's going to come all the way down here to downtown. It cuts across McEwen University, comes over to the University of Alberta, and that heads all the way south down here as well. They're expanding that to go even farther south, south of the Anthony Hende. And they've just opened up a second line, which is going to come up from Mill Woods, cut across the city, and it's going to go from this southeast corner all the way out to West Edmonton Mall and a little bit farther west. Now they've opened the first part that's going to come up from Mill Woods up a little bit and then a little bit over to the west and they're going to keep working on that to bring it across, meet up with the first LRT line and then head out west to West Edmonton Mall. Now that really is it guys, that's the general map tour of Edmonton. Again, if you're a visual learner, I hope you appreciated this video. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button so other people can find this as well and just get a sense of what it's like to live in Edmonton, what some of the different communities might offer. And again, if you are looking to be the first to know about the current market conditions here in the Edmonton area, then go ahead and subscribe to the channel so that you are the first to know when we upload these videos and you can know about these current market conditions. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video, guys, and we will see you in the next one.